we're back. We're back. Okay. So, what were we talking about, Evelyn? Ooh, we were talking about having cash and when Pools. was the best time ah, yes. and when was not the best time That's for right. retailers. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, in trading, tra options. In thinking in terms of tra options, because a trade exchange is a group of business owners that use a currency, in our case, tra options, to exchange goods and services with each other. Rather than an accountant, for example, trading directly with an auto repair company, because the accountant may need the auto repair at one particular time and not need it for another year, even though the business owner who has the auto repair shop might have to file quarterly reports and need the accountant every quarter. So what happens then? Well, the accountant does the, the tax, the, uh, the, the report, taxes at the end of the year, but doesn't need his car done all that many times. So then there's an imbalance. Using a currency, just like the U.S. dollar, using a currency called a tra-option, which is geared dollar for dollar, allows that accountant and that, um, what was I saying, and that uh, auto repair person to do business all year long. And they get these trade credits, trade dollars, or we call them tra-options, that they individually can use for all kinds of other products and services. So anyway, there's a whole group of business owners that love to do that. In times like these, they like to do it even more. That's right. So keep those traps, keep buying those traps. Yes, hold on to them. Hold, no. well, <laughs> use, actually use them. They don't do you any good if you just hold. That's true. Actually use them. And of course you can buy products and services. Even free trading stock can be bought with traptions, we know. So we found this group, there, were, there was more than one trade exchange uh, in Philadelphia. We went there initially, and it was interesting. The expense for us to be in Pennsylvania, and this the first trade exchange owner we talked to, who was part of a national chain, I won't mention their name, but the four letters are I-T-E-X. Anyway, he started to uh, waste our time. Mm -hmm. it, was, it cost us $300 a day to be <laughs> on the road. And he said, well, I'm going to have to talk with headquarters, and it's going to take me three days or so. You guys just hang around. And we said, wait a second. We can't just hang around. I'll tell you, after we met with that gentleman, we packed up and left Philadelphia so fast it would make your head spin. In New York Minute. We were Thanks out of there. <laughs> it took longer for us to find a hotel because we were looking for a hotel that would be close to his office so we could interact, so we could work together. I think we spent maybe two hours checking hotels until we found what we thought was the perfect hotel in proximity to this particular trade. We even got phone numbers, the phone number I have today and that Evelyn has today, Pennsylvania phone numbers. Oh, no, no, we didn't. We, didn't, uh, we bought the phones there, but we ended up changing uh, our phone numbers to Pittsburgh numbers Pittsburgh. later. But yes, yes. at any rate, um, we were just highly insensitive it should take that long. To make a decision. So we got in the car and we started driving toward Pittsburgh. We actually called ahead to the Pittsburgh Trade Exchange to see what they would have available. And we had already established a relationship. We had already signed up with them. As a matter of fact, we had signed up with the one in Philadelphia too. We had signed up with both of them, paid our fees, had our credit card there to be charged for their monthly fees, and we were ready to go. We had established this relationship. Important point, mm -hmm. establish a relationship with that trade exchange. Let them know that you're a real company, mm -hmm. a real person willing to pay your fees. So we did that. And um, we stopped in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, because we wanted to make sure that what we would do would be just fine with the powers that be in, Phil in uh, Pennsylvania. In the Commonwealth. In the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So we actually stopped in Harrisburg and told them what we planned on doing told them that we plan on working with uh, this affinity group of, because once you join the trade exchange, the members are part of your affinity group. They're a part of your, quote, friends and family, not really your family, but your friends, business associates. You're a part of this community. You're right. part of that trade exchange. Right. They're your affinity group. Mm -hmm. So we talked to these people there. One was, um, one gentleman there was the, um, uh, he was the head of exemptions at that time. Another gentleman was in charge of enforcement at that time. They, we, sat, down they sat down and talked with us. We told them exactly what we wanted to do. We had already submitted our company uh, plan, our private placement memorandum, which they had already agreed to, or, or they just 
they don't agree that it's or approve of it. They um, it. they acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. It has to be filed, and they acknowledge the filing because it was an exemption. They had already done that. They were familiar with the term Troption. They were familiar with Global. At that point, we were called Global Trading Partners. They knew exactly who we were. We went and met them personally, and they said, we don't see any problem with what you want to do and how you intend to do it. So, from there we left and continued on to on Pittsburgh. Our journey, yes. And we ended up getting to Pittsburgh in the evening, but this wonderful trade exchange at that time, they were called, do you remember? Barterall. They were yes. called, Barter, called Barterall, this wonderful trade exchange. I still remember Scott They opened down their there. arms. They, with open they arms, greeted us. So they were wonderful. wonderful. They were absolutely wonderful as a trade exchange there in Pittsburgh. They have since merged with some other trade exchange, and they actually used part of a name that we came up with yes. to help them do the same thing. Mm -hmm. They're called the Pittsburgh Trade Alliance. We had uh, mm -hmm. came up with the name of the Trade right, Alliance. Right, because we were doing, uh, taking them public We were going to well. do the same thing. They and said, well, can you do the same thing for us that right. you did for yourself? Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's another story. That's but, another story. Uh, we went to Pittsburgh. We met with these wonderful people. They had a terrific bed and breakfast available for us to go and stay at. They had found a restaurant and said, if you're hungry, why don't you utilize this restaurant using what we call troptions, they call trade dollars at that time, and the, and we talked with We had just a wonderful time. They were so accommodating. They were absolutely wonderful. I forget Scott's last name. Even the people. Everybody oh, was very, very Pittsburgh nice. is a wonderful time. so town. much. It was great, you know, because the people were um, friendly, and it was just a wonderful. We had, because we, we fellowshiped and had food and you know, broke bread with them. And uh, I mean, we got to know them. We got to know their families. It, it was really wonderful time together. And I'll tell you, if you don't find a trade exchange that will believe in you, that it will at least give you an opportunity to show that you're a good guy or a bad guy. Some, I'll tell you, trade exchanges, barter companies, they see the best and the worst. Yeah. They really get a weird mix of folks who have every kind of crazy cockamamie idea. So don't be initially put off if, if uh, they think of you as someone who's kind of weird or if they're, if they're not immediately open. But if they're not at least willing to welcome you as a client and to, to suggest that there are things that you, to give, a look, give you a little rope to prove yourself that's not a good mix for you. They have to at least extend to you some uh, welcome and open arms and say at least, hey, here, try this, try that. You, you're a paying client, you paid their fees, you have a credit card on file with them or, or you've paid your, your percentages or whatever you're willing to pay, you don't, you can never, ever, ever, ever stiff them or not pay the fees. Right. You have to be, you have to show yourself as someone who's willing to pay the fees immediately. If you're willing to do that, if they're not willing to extend to you the, the right hand of fellowship and a little credit, mm -hmm. then move on. Right. Close your account, move on. They're not going to be able to work with you. Because you abide by their rules and regulations you pay. You know, whatever their regulations are, you abide by them and, and it's fine. Absolutely. So, uh, oh, well, it's getting there. But we, I don't know, I, don't, I wonder if this thing's going just a little too fast. But anyway, mm -hmm. um, so... That's what you've got to do. Now we're going to tell, at the, when we come back, we're going to tell you more exactly how we started to raise the money. Come back.